Hi there and welcome, I'm Nikki Sutton and I help people realise the infinite nature of self and of reality. Thank you for joining me today, I hope you're very well. This is about families and finding your individual self within your family. I've already recorded part of this video but the microphone wasn't plugged in and I always find it very difficult to go back and do it all again because it all just flows and then if I have to do it all again it's not flowing anymore <laughs> so I'll try my best until I get back to the point where I was. Okay so when we incarnate within a family we choose who to incarnate with That's, that happens before birth and some souls we incarnate with we know very well and we're very close to because we've been with them for eons incarnating over and over again together but then we may choose and have agreements with other souls we don't know so well or we know we're going to have friction with and that's done on purpose so that we can learn the lessons that they bring and they bring out certain aspects of us that we can either be conscious of or unconscious of we can either learn from them or not it's all part of the experience of this reality. We incarnate here to learn certain lessons and have experiences all for the benefit of our soul and our ascension. Also, we come here to for missions, you know, like raising the vibration and during the ascension of this planet, which is happening. It sometimes looks like it's not, but it is. Things need to sink lower before they go up a bit, you see. So when we incarnate in a family group, families often have certain norms of behaviours, values, beliefs as a group, as a unit. And we're born into this and kids are very impressionable and we take on a lot of these values and beliefs. We might find them strange as we get older. And we take on these values and beliefs and sort of become like them and they mould us. And that's natural. It's not, There's no usually any hidden agenda by, behind it. Family units are what they are and there's certain members of a family that might be more dominant than others and uh, be the centre of the family and their beliefs and attitudes and behaviours might rub off on others a lot more. And during teenage years often we start to want to find our individual selves. And it can go on longer than that too, obviously, while we find ourselves. But some of us don't individuate ourselves from the others. We don't try to find our individual selves and are swept along with them and we become like them. And sometimes resulting in great unhappiness and sorrow. And then many of us become conscious of really wanting to find our individual self and who we are as a person. The family might make us feel guilty or bad or strange or crazy that we want to be something different. Some, some families behave that way. You end up the black sheep of the family. But what I want to say is that it's part of your challenge while you're here is to find your individual self and not to feel guilty about that. If you're family don't want you to be different or find you strange. I mean the classic example is that of a spiritual awakening. We change don't we and if the rest of our family is very 3D orientated they might find us strange or crazy or worry about us but not to feel guilty that you are different because you may have incarnated different at a different stage of evolution. Your incarnation here might not be to just uh, be immersed in 3D materialism and brainwashing and other notions that we are programmed with regularly in this reality. It might be your path to see outside of that and have different points of view, values, beliefs, thoughts, behaviours. You need to build your own self-image, your own self-esteem. In younger years, I mean, we might have ended up in a family which doesn't love and care for us as much as, the, as, much as we needed. And we might have found that strange and, and realised as time went on that that wasn't right. So we naturally start to deviate from how they are. 
and break that cycle and we don't pass it on to our own children. And they might find you to be the black sheep of the family, but that's okay. Because you are entitled to find your own way, to build your own personality that's different. And you can give them lots of chances to accept you and still love them unconditionally so long as they don't make you terribly unhappy and they're not the type of family that really is very unkind. If they're still okay, then you can still find ways to be with them and love them unconditionally. But accept, self-acceptance, that you're different. If you are different, accept that you are different from your family. And individuation from your family is okay. They may have lots of strongly held beliefs. They may act in a certain way and have little tolerance for family members who are different. But the guilt that you may have from that, it's an unnecessary negative emotion that you don't need to carry. I mean, some of my family members, some of them I, I love to be as well, I love them all, but I, I get on really well with, I, I gel with, and I, I feel like I've known them for millennia. And then other family members I struggle to find conversation with, and it's a bit, a bit awkward sometimes. And then others that I just don't have anything in common with, but I still make an effort with all of them. But that's natural and you can accept that you can be your own person. Another point is that families are great, even when there's such a big contrast between people, even if they're all the same and you're different. The tool for learning and experience is absolutely amazing because you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family members from a human point of view anyway, your soul knows. Even when you have children, you, you have no guarantee what their personality is going to be like. They could be completely different from you. And I have kids myself and I see that their personalities are you know, partly shaped by what we do and how we treat them, you know, but they have their own personalities. And I, I realised that, you know, with my second child, that she was com completely different to the other right from the beginning. <laughs> because the personality bleeds through a little bit from lifetime to lifetime. So even when you have your own kids, you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> so when you incarnate into a, a group of people that may be very different from each other, that's a wonderful set of lessons that they can bring because any kind of relationship is a mirror. When we get triggered by the mirror, <laughs> when we get triggered by them and how they behave towards us, that shows that there's something inside of us, well, that's getting triggered, something inside of us that we could work on because ultimately we could aim to not get triggered at all by anything. Even if their behaviours are, are pretty rotten towards us, or strange or a bit funny, through understanding of them, of why they are how they are and acceptance of them, if we choose to still be around them, of course, we can not get triggered because any triggering happens within the self, not by them, because no one can make you feel any way. No one can make you feel happy, sad, frustrated, irritated. It's how you allow yourself to feel. The feeling is within you only. It's not within them. They trigger it within you. So you can find a way not to be frustrated, angry, irritated, whatever it is through understanding and forgiveness of them, of why they are how they are, acceptance of, okay, that's the kind of thing they say, that's a given, they may have an issue with me, that's come from the past and they probably need healing, that's why they behave that way. So you can find ways not to get triggered. But that, those, those are amazing lessons, because let's say when I'm around my family and I get a little bit triggered here and there, when I go, not my, family that my own family now but my uh, family I grew up with I go along to see them and I might get a bit triggered here and there a little bit still a lot less nowadays and that's that's like oh what's that that just got triggered how can I have acceptance of why that person is how they are why they've said that is that something from their past that causes them to be that way 
you know. So the lessons we can learn from family are immeasurable, infinite, because you have a collection of people that are thrown together, a collection of souls that are put together. You don't choose them and they're great for learning experience and still being able to be with them and have them as family. Being able to get to that point, even if it is a struggle for you. But as I say, if, they're, if, if they cause you great sadness, and uh, then sometimes it's a good idea to take a, a big step back from them until perhaps you're ready or until perhaps they heal. So individuation from your family, it's a challenge of this reality because you're brought, you're brought up in, within a set of beliefs and values and perceptions and that's often transferred onto you and it's a challenge of yours to find your own way and your own personality and not to feel guilty about that. But, you know, I always try my best with my family and to remember that you're always learning lessons from them and when you feel funny negative emotions come up inside because they're around, have a look at what that is because they're great mirrors for us great for learning and experience. So I hope that's been helpful today on families and why we incarnate with them and finding your own way etc. And please leave me and others a comment on what you think about that and how what experiences you've had with family members in that way. And please consider visiting nikkisutton.com. I've got two online interactive courses there for you to do if you've got some spare time. And remember to click subscribe if you're not already a subscriber to receive regular spiritual inspiration on your journey through life and hit that bell button too for notifications because we're raising the mass vibration together. So go now in love and peace.